Well, hi, thank you so much for joining me here in my shop for another step with this radio. Uh, today is January 10th, by the way. Um, so, I, the very last thing that happened at the very end of the last video was I snuffed out part of the hum, but not all of the hum that was in here. I snuffed out the part I would call um, the, uh, the, the part with harmonics in it the sharper sounding part and left behind a warmer hum that coupled with the fact that when I looked on the scope of course you could see a hum uh, in not only the uh, <coughs> first filter capacitor lead but the second filter capacitor lead it showed a little bit of hum in it so I think you know what it's time for this guy to go so that's what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna replace this completely I've got his three replacements down here I'm just gonna install them then come back on the video and we'll carry on and see see what that does to uh, to the hums in this radio. Some of you might be cheering at this point. Eh? <laughs> so the approach I'm taking here is I bundled the three capacitors together, uh, put their negatives together. Then I'm going to cut these wires so the bulk of the wire stays in the radio and utilize the three wires to connect back to the three positives and use the black wire to connect back to the negative and then set this back down in the same area of the radio where the other capacitor was. How I'm going to attach it in here, I, I don't know. I don't know if I even need to really. We'll, we'll see when I get there. But that's the approach I'm taking. Fantastic. Okay, we cut all these off <clears throat> and I want to try to do this with the least amount of uh, exposed conductor when I'm done because it's high voltage involved here what's going through my head while I'm doing this. Okay, I'll finish it off. We'll see what we end up with. Okay, I've got the new capacitors installed in there. We'll take a little bit of a closer look at the arrangement. Uh, it's still a little loose. A little floppy in here. So I'll probably have to fix it down somehow, but for now that's fine. Very good. There we are. Let's give them a try now. And we'll see what happens. Actually, we're going to hear what happens. Hopefully, we won't see what happens. We're not supposed to see what happens here. Plugs in. Dim bulb's really important on this situation. Having done all this, if I've made a boo boo, it's going to show up. Switches. Switches off for now. Good. All normal. Switch on. Here we go. Watch that bulb. I can't even see it coming on. Supply voltage 116 volts to the radio. Turn up a bit. I'm not surprised. I've really come to the conclusion that the hum in this radio is coming from the audio unshielded audio circuits. I'm going to repeat that grounding thing I did at the end of the last video. The long clip lead this time. I think the conclusion is, this is what this radio sounds like. Um, now the volume's up full to hear this. You know, a typical volume setting would be more like that. Don't hear a thing. So I, I think that's really what this is. Um, 
a tolerable hum built into the design of the radio, save a few pennies on some shielded shielded wire. Could be some layout issues here where this power cord has been laid. And that reminds me, there's that power capacitor that I really want to get at. And uh, um, I think it's this guy here. So one side of this capacitor is hooked up to the power cord right over here. The other side goes to a terminal with a wire on it and the wire comes back to the uh, switch terminal here. So that's the other side of the power cord. So this is the guy, it's right across the power. Let's go after him next. He's the guy, turn off, turn off, don't forget, turn off. He's the guy. Let me, uh, let me chop him out of here. He's the guy what? Well, you could get a short circuit in the capacitor and then you've got basically, as I mentioned before, you got nuclear power plants pushing on it. I'm pretty sure a nuclear power plant can set this thing on fire here. About 50% of the, uh, or the base load in Ontario, about 50% of the power is from uh, three nuclear stations, 10, 10, 12 reactors. I don't know how many reactors now. Let's give them the test. Yeah, my last house before I moved here, I lived in a place, a city called Pickering, and there's a nuclear power plant, almost the biggest, almost the oldest in the world. It's eight reactors, I think four or six are still operating today. station was built in two sections. First section was 63 or 64, 1963 or 64. And my house was located just about exactly one kilometer from the plant. So I was right on the edge of the exclusion zone. Uh, that's where I brought my family up. Okay, here we go. 50 volts. Well, it's half opened. So it's just, they're all similar. They're all coming in here similar. Similar response. Not good, but not bad at the same time. Okay, let's we'll put that with the growing collection of capacitors here. I'll go ahead and I'll stick a I'll stick a new one in there. Uh, now I have special ones. Let me show you these. They uh, they have a different look. They look squarish. We're looking for a 0.02. This is a 0.1. And uh, these are 0.01. Somewhere in here I'll find a 0.02. But see, they look quite different, eh? 0.02. Um, here we are. Here we are. I got them here. 0.02. 0.02. Okay. So we'll fit this guy in. And then you know what? Nuclear power plants, huge Niagara Falls power station, nothing can blow this guy up. He's that strong. You can stand up to a nuclear power plant. Wow. Where, where's it go again? <laughs> so I'll get it installed. Whoa. Oh, camera, where'd you go? Whoa, ooh, 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 ooh. Tripped on the camera wire there. Okay, so I've installed the, uh, you can call it a safety capacitor if you like. You make a safer capacitor, that might be a better better name for it. Okay, why don't we, why don't we, why don't we give this guy another try? Now, wow, if this knocks the hum out of it, I'll be shocked. Shock's not a good word to use in your shop, by the way. Not in this kind of shop. Fire on. And right at this moment, nuclear power plants and huge hydro generators are pushing on that capacitor.
pushing on it with all their might. Well, maybe not all their might. And there she comes, of course. Sounds like it's stronger and better than ever. It, you know, it's possible as I as I remove capacitors or change capacitors that the operation of the radio is getting a little bit better and a little bit stronger, and I am in fact strengthening up this hum a little bit, especially if I'm working in the audio circuits, which I don't think I really have been. Now there's a real interesting bulbous piece of shiny wax right here. Kind of, you can see that in the camera a little bit anyway. Is it? You know, my imagination says, well, that's because that capacitor got hot and it actually dripped out of it. Look at that. Let's look at that with a close up camera because it really is, really is distinct. Let's see if we can get in there with this guy. That as always looks just a little different. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to switch to manual focus here. Just bear with me a sec. Get a little better control over the focus if I do it by hand. There. So, so the wax here is kind of dark. Well, this looks shiny and new, like this came bluffing out from inside. It really does look that way, very, very much to my eye. There, you can get a better look at it there. Uh, it's hanging downwards. The radio's upside down, so the, the blob is actually run downwards. It's like it's come out from the lead area and gone downwards. So, you know, can capacitors really do this? You know, I, I don't know, to be honest with you. I've seen lots of capacitors in conditions something like this. But as for getting hot, for crying out loud, I have a thermal viewer. Well, there's no need to cry out loud. I'm going to go find my thermal viewer and we are going to look in this radio for the first time. I don't think I've used it yet. Oh, man alive. Okay, I have to just run through the house briefly and get it. Yes, if, it, if the capacitor like that's going to get hot, it's going to take quite a long time to do it. So let's see. So currently we're set for 25. We'll show up red on here. That's a little too low. Let's raise the upper. Raise the upper. Select it. Up, up. Red at 35. 15 on the bottom. Let's raise that a little bit too. There. Well, there's certainly something showing up quite red there. Uh, is it that capacitor? I'm going to have to wheel this around on my own. A lot more heat in here than I would have expected. So what I'm seeing is these two uh, sockets. Maybe, maybe Let me switch cameras. Maybe we can see this from the other camera. And if I just take a moment and put the autofocus back on. Well, I'm not sure how this is going to work out. Let's give it a try. Okay, I don't know how this is going to... Yeah. So we're trying to see this capacitor here. So in, in the view, I see a red circle, a red circle, sort of a circle, over here, and then something in the middle. A red circle, a red circle, and something in the middle. Can I get only only this capacitor? So the capacitor, you know, from this kind of crazy way of doing this, um, it looks like it's hot in this end. You know, what could have happened is it just got heated up from the two tubes over over a long period of time. Um, it's quite inconclusive here. Let me make this a little less sensitive. Well, uh, raise the uh, top temperature here 
So you won't see red till you see 40 now. Or near 40. So again, you can see the, the tube socket. You can actually see the round, roundy shape of it. And the other tube socket is hotter. And in between... Um, I think I'm seeing it. I think I'm seeing it. Now, the, the temperature difference could be very, very small. I can make my uh, viewer here quite sensitive to a tight range of temperatures. So I want to get uh, some kind of positive proof of it. I find the back of my finger to be very sensitive. And another great spot is your upper lip, but I'm not going to stick my upper lip on this. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> you know, it feels a little warm, but, oh, this doesn't. This feels cool. That feels cool. It's right above one of the tubes, too. I gotta watch out for that wire. Well, so I get my finger so close to this, I can feel heat radiating from these two resistors. So am I really feeling the heat of the capacitor? Oh, it's hard to tell. Wow. Obviously not dramatic. Oh, I don't want to give up on this so quickly. Let me try that viewer again. The viewer's pretty convincing that... Uh, this way. Let me switch cameras here. I'm going to try to see the, 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 uh, wow. Okay, so we got the two hot tubes here. I'm just blasting this thing. So what, what is that red dot there? Um, so to find out, <laughs> I stick my finger in the view, but touch the top of that capacitor. No, the red dot is, is farther away. The red dot is back here somewhere. Way back here. Red dot's not even in the radio. The red dot is the filament in my dim bulb way off in the background. Uh, so that's what that is. That's seeing my dim bulb. You can see it in the top of the... Uh, you can see it up here. <laughs> yeah, because uh, power's running through the dim bulb. And it's actually a little bit of heat in there. Back to this deal. So when you look at the image now, you see what looks like frothing in here, this frothy area. And that's, I've learned from experience in using this, that's actually hot air. That's actually air movement uh, moving around there. So we can see where my finger, my finger I'm trying to touch the top and mark it. I'm right onto the red blob. So we're going to make this less sensitive again. A little less sensitive. So now we got to be up around 60 degrees to see red, but you can see other colors. So, so this might give us a better view of the capacitor here. My finger is more visible. So that's the capacitor right there. Now it's kind of a light bluish color, and I've got, see the white plus sign right in the center of the screen? That's telling you the temperature down here. So whatever I aim, like if I aim that at this hot area, you'll see the temperature shows uh, 80, 80 degrees. I come back here, once again, make sure I've got the spot. That's the spot. So that's the capacitor right there, 32, 33. Now, how is that different from any other capacitor anywhere in here? I mean, it's, it's, it's 
showing the tiniest amount of heat. So I'll just pick another capacitor. Any, meeny, miny, mo. I'll pick this one. And its temperature is, I bet you it's going to be warmer. 31. You know, everything's going to get warmed up in here. Inconclusive. That's about as careful as I can do this. Is there really any heat in this capacitor? Wow. But I think that'll be the next one that we change out. What is it doing? It's it's messing around with the uh, output tube. It's pin number one, two, three. It's on pin three of the output tube. What's pin three? Pin three of the output tube. 50 L6. Pin three is the plate. The plate. Okay, I we need to peek at the uh, schematic to figure this out. It's a uh, 0.01. Looks like 0.01 on the plate. Let's take a look at the at the uh, schematic here. Output tube, plate. There's the O2. Basically, it's from plate to cathode. And I'm looking back at the radio. This capacitor is connected to terminals of two different tubes. One is the rectifier tube. It may just be a handy spot to connect, but uh, how, how do you figure that? How, how can that possibly be? It's definitely on the plate here. Um, I don't, I don't, oh, I'm a little lost here on how this can be. Let me look back, just bear with me a second. I'm looking back on the radio again. Maybe I'm not seeing the leads properly. The radio is still on, too. Jim, don't forget that. So, yeah, it's on pin three of the output tube, but then it goes over to pin number, oh boy, pin number, pin number what? Pin number, okay, pin number, it's this capacitor. So I'll put a rectifier. So hard to spot there, there, there. So that's got to be uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Count it that way. Count the other way. Eight. Eight on the rectifier tube. What is pin number eight? Thirty-five Z five, wasn't it? Thirty-five Z five. 35Z5. Pin 8 is the cathode. Pin 8 is the cathode. Okay, let's take a look at the schematic again. See if we can sort any of this out. So, pin 8. I just got confused about this connection here. So it's going from plate to cathode. Well, well it's gonna take it's gonna take some pressure there. Okay, I'll turn the power off here before I have an exciting morning. So this guy is connected between the plate and the cathode. How does that work? It sure doesn't look like it. It's connected here. How's how's that qualify as the cathode over here? So supposedly it's right on the cathode. What what I, mean, I got something wrong here for sure. Something is not adding up.
output tube pin one two three no doubt about it pin three I'm just gonna double check everything pin three on the output tube pin three on the output tube plate see it going down in heading for the speaker off that terminal too that's definitely the plate heading for the speaker or output transformer uh, 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 so and then on to over here an A is a cathode cathode of the rectifier tube cathode of the rectifier tube Uh, this just isn't adding up. So, um, what I'm seeing is that this capacitor, this lead, is connected to this terminal here on the far side of this. Would that be a problem? Why, why did they not connect it as shown here, just from plate to cathode? Why from, it's definitely, it's from the plate, right? Plate on the, that's right, plate on the output tube, for sure. To the cathode of the rectifier, okay, so just something is just not working out here. Uh, so what is there that is connected between the cathode and the plate? of the output tube so what what did they actually do so I, I'm, I'm probably just caught up in some tricky wiring thing here now, there's no way this is going anywhere but to that terminal three and it's supposed to go to the cathode the cathode is this guy here Hey, look at that. There's a wire coming off the cathode. I bet you that wire goes right to the... Ouch. Scare myself. It comes right... It comes to this terminal. So the wire from... The cathode. There's no pin there. And the cathode was eight. This is the cathode. This is the cathode. That's a cathode resistor. This is the grid. This is the grid bleeder to a ground. This is a ground. This is a B minus point. And yeah, it's heading over. Okay. That's great for that. It's nothing to do with this. Back to this guy. This guy, plate to, oh, I, that can't be a cathode. What's going on here? So I counted these wrong. I must have counted these wrong. Um, the problem is I can't, I can't spot the key in here. And part of the problem is I only have one light on in my shot. Okay, I can clearly see now the key. The key is there. This is pin 8. That's pin 8 right there. Pin 8 with the red wire from the capacitors. 
but also this large resistor is on there. That makes sense, doesn't it? The resistor comes to this terminal, this terminal ties to this terminal, and this terminal on the green wire goes back to the capacitor. So I've got a high voltage resistor, high voltage, that's capacitor, resistor, capacitor, pi, pi right there in front of me to be seen, pi to be seen. Um, I'm poking around. Let me just pull the plug out for double safety. So, so what's going on here then is pin eight of the thirty-five thirty-five Z for life. Pin eight cathode. Cathodes where the positive voltage builds up. What is this guy doing there? Between the cathode and the plate. Cathode and plate. Okay, back on the schematic here. Between the cathode and the plate. Did somebody just make a, a silly mistake? How could they have? I get the tubes confused and ran the capacitor to the wrong K. To this K, why it should have been that K. Is that where the hum comes from? Um, this capacitor in this position doesn't exist. Well, this is the 20. Yeah, this is the 20 coming in. Well, let, me, let me track it that way. We'll, we'll follow from the big 20 capacitor. It's a yellow wire. should go to the cathode. I'm just taking a quick look to the cathode. No question about that. That marks the cathode, and this capacitor I'm dealing with has nothing to do with that terminal. The capacitor I'm dealing with has nothing to do with this connection. It's connected over here. Now, what 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 capacitor is over here? Oh, look, look. Oh, okay. Did I make a mistake before? And I thought I replaced this one. So this capacitor's size, I'm looking at it in the radio here, is a 0 0.01. 0 0.01, not 0 0.025. 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01. You know what? This, this capacitor's not in this, not in here. So this, this, so the 0.02 is this? Is, is there a 0.02 doing this from plate to cathode? Let me look at that very carefully. Plate to cathode of the 50L6. Okay, let's look together. Plate to cathode of the 50L6. Plate cathode. How can there be a capacitor across there? Plate. So this, this is uh, connected to a wire going to the capacitor and connected to this is the cathode, connected to the cathode resistor. So, oh, 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 um, da, 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 Rectifier. So I don't know what to do here. So am I supposed to remove this? It's not shown on the schematic. I don't know why it would exist like this. Anyway, it doesn't make any sense to me. Remove this, get rid of it, and install what's shown on the schematic, a capacitor from here to here. 
I just I don't like it when these things happen. The first thing I keep saying to myself is, Jim, you just don't you haven't figured it out yet. That's all. You just haven't figured it out yet. This 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 is on the uh, let's look at that schematic again. So uh, down around here is there a, a 0.01? Sometimes they put a capacitor right across there. Point oh one in, point oh two missing. So now there's a possibility there's an error on this schematic. This is a redrawn schematic. And of course, there's a possibility the radio has been updated and this schematic's out of date. And so I'm seeing a, a corrected radio, or the opposite is true. Uh, this radio is an early version, and eventually they caught their mistake and corrected it. So in the later versions of this radio, that capacitor is in a different position. Could have been as simple as one builder making a mistake over and over, and the consequences are so subtle that they didn't pick it up in testing. Doesn't, it just doesn't, you know, that's that's a story, all right. That is a story. How is this going to help us decide what to do, though? What to do? What to do? What to do about it? Well, um, so what, what could this guy be doing in here? Going from stop for a bit clear my head uh, maybe when my head is a little more clear I'll be able to make a decision on how to proceed on this son of a gun okay well I think I sorted things out here uh, definitely this radio is not the same as the schematic I've got um, this this point oh two doesn't exist this there's nothing in this position here and this point oh one that's here in effect is across the uh, primary winding of the output transformer and that's a typical place for a capacitor to be and it's not on the schematic so um, so I think it's fine but I, I, I need to replace it I think it, it's I think it's appropriate that it be there Wow if this was a 0.02 I would be really in trouble because I would really be convinced it's this capacitor installed improperly but what I really think has happened is it's a change of design in the radio and uh, I'm just going to guess this is a later design what they've done here can this be the cause of that funny hum? I, well, that's an interesting question it's right across the primary winding what goes through there that might not go through there it might go through here instead I don't think it can be the hum. Now, the hum is an audio level signal. It's heading for the speaker once it gets here. If you tried to kill the audio type hum with this, you'd kill everything under the sun. There'd be nothing left. So this is probably for RF that has somehow made it all the way here or something like that. I'm really not sure what it's for. So I replace this after all that monkey business and uh, and we'll, we'll play the radio again. As for the 0.02 and the position it's shown, I, I guess it's not really needed. So I'll replace that one that's there. Okay, let's give them a test. 50 volts, half open, similar to the last one. And 150 can't open. It's another case, you know, tired, leaky capacitor. Um, cause a hum. I don't think so. Okay, so I'll get the new one put in there and we'll, we'll find out. Okay, let's try it out once more here. Uh, you can see the capacitors there now. It's interesting how as you uh, switch all these big big fat guys for these little skinny guys, the radio gets, looking, gets to look simpler and simpler as you go. Okay, uh, power on.
Again, if this has changed that hum, I'll be floored, but well, always room to learn. And I'm really quite convinced the hum is coming from unshielded circuitry in the uh, early audio stages of the radio. Having said that, I'm glad the hum showed up now. It just sounds even stronger yet. Like now I can hear it down to about halfway. Of course, the program material may be getting louder too through this radio. We haven't actually tuned anything in for a while. Why don't we do that? So, what would be stopping me from doing that? We're on the wrong band. There we are. That was a short wave band all that time. Can you hear the hum? If it's in there, we can't hear it. Wait a minute. Right in this quiet zone here. So I can hear it now, but no one's going to sit and listen to this. Right? This is this is what I think they were counting on. Okay, so it's upside down, but. So French station right in this area here. So now did you hear that? Did you hear what? Listen for a sound as I tune through this. Okay, there we go. Yeah, ignore what I said. That one, that one. Do you hear that one? So my past experience now tells me that that is probably the effect of an image. Some experimenting I did a few radios ago. So that, that starts hinting that image suppression maybe not so good in this radio. Or at the image location for this frequency, there's a very powerful noise signal, which is also quite possible. If poor radio has to put up with a modern circumstances it was never designed for. I didn't hear the French station though. Now I have it turned up loud enough I can hear that hum a little bit. No French station. Let's try it like this. Nope. Okay, keep going. We're down around here. We should pick up stations. Right here. The radio's gotten awfully quiet now. Oh! Probably 680. Probably 640. Coming out of 66 instead of 640. Okay, so it's still working. Now, look, the hum is quite distinct, isn't it? That's loud enough to be an annoyance. They wouldn't have marketed a radio that did this. There's more to be found. Yeah, it could even be a tube that's causing this, uh, this hum. So uh, what I'll do is I'm just going to continue along. We're getting to the front end of the radio now. Uh, maybe we're going to correct some problems on the short wave, which seems to be weak. So maybe tomorrow focus on the front end capacitors what is there three there's only three paper capacitors you can't, can't imagine that's going to be too big a deal and then uh, that's it for the capacitor uh, change out phase of things good too bad it hums i'm gonna get that on see you on the next video